to not sound like anything you play the rhythm warriors. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry, Jess. <laughs> just me, just me. Um, so, um, have we got a bit of time? I don't know if anyone's got any personal questions, not too personal for Mike, but uh, if you've read the book, if anyone's got to anything they'd like to ask or not? Does it matter if you've not? No, I don't yeah, know. Mike, what do you think, you know, you know, you and I talk a lot, so you know I'm very much uh, um, in line, I suppose, with, with thinking um, and I admire it immensely. And also, the book itself, which I think is just a is a, is a brilliant uh, set of tools, really, for, for, for life. Yeah. Um, what, do you think of, what do you think the barriers are that stop people grasping? What are, the, what are the things that, that stop us from? I think, I think for me, the biggest barriers, um, ultimately, really, to learning is what we're talking about. Um, is fear? Of failure. Uh, fear of failure. And I think fear of failure are, are really, really significant barriers to all of us. Fear of looking a bit silly. Fear of being ridiculed. Really Fear of uh, not meeting the mark, and I think you know it links to links to this idea of you know we we we've called this organisation here Childs, um, and and part of it was it was just a nice neat little acronym that linked to Children Institute of Learning Development and Sport, but in a roundabout way, you know what happens to us. When are we at our most curious and our most creative? Is when we're seven, eight years old. That's when we're at our most curious and creative because, you know, we don't give a monkeys about what other people think. We're not trying to reach some sort of, you know, goal or some sort of... We're just at our most curious, at our most playful, uh, at our most creative. And then what happens over... The next years, we become a bit more adult. Oh, that wouldn't look so good. Oh, I don't want to stand out from the crowd too much. Or oh, and suddenly we put on this this these layers of armor to protect ourselves, and we become a little bit cynical, and we stop trying, and we stop, you know. Yet. There are wonderful examples in our sport and here in our, at our tennis club. We've got a guy who was playing a, a tournament here over the weekend, 84 years old. 84 years old and he's out playing and he's out learning and he's out wanting to get better. Um, and because he's decided to choose his attitude around fear. And I think fear is, is for me, is, is our biggest obstacle in Things. And most of the time it's completely irrational for you. Most of the time it's completely irrational. I don't know if that's helps John. Yeah, well I agree with you of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just interested to do to, to get you to explain it a bit more because I guess part of the process is to help people overcome that fear, isn't it? To and to, to differentiate between rational and irrational fear because it's perfectly rational to be scared of um, you know, when your kid steps out on the road to sort of tell them to not to do that. So most of it, of course, is made up, isn't it? And, and the difficulty is, the, the problem is that we make things up. Absolutely. We tend to make negative things up, don't we? And especially, you know, youngsters coming through sort of high school age, mm -hmm. you know, there is a, there's a very, very strong desire and need to, to fit in. Yeah. Right? And, and so, therefore, here we have a, a bit of an expression in the saying around fitting in because you work so hard. Fitting in because you were curious, fitting in because you want to learn, and standing out because perhaps you're not there to work hard. And it's just flipping the, flipping, you know, looking at the other side of the coin. And um, uh, yeah, so I think I think uh, a lot we can learn. Um, I follow it on, Mike, with the growth mindset. Obviously, it's, it's also a big thing in schools. So I work in education, and so. I'd be really interested in how, you know, I'm using analogy as teachers, how do you work with coaches to really, do you overtly coach how to become more of a growth mindset person rather than fixed? And yeah. how, what sort of practical strategies yeah. do you advocate? Absolutely, and I think, I think 
the growth mindset, those of you who've worked and, and studied a little bit of Carol's work, there's a, there's a growth mindset that our abilities are not fixed, right? That our abilities with effort and work and practice, we can, we can change our intellect, we can change our skill levels, um, and, and we're always growing, always learning, always developing, rather than the fixed mindset that says, actually, this is your intelligence, this is your talent level, this is what you've got, so you better have a healthy dose of it, because you're going to spend your whole life trying to prove it. And in terms of, I think that's really, really closely linked to how we develop um, what I would call intrinsic motivation. So there's how we, how we motivate ourselves or how we're motivated in life can be intrinsic, internal, and can be extrinsic, external. So I'm motivated externally by reward, by finances perhaps, by um, extrinsic carrot and stick perhaps approach. As opposed to developing intrinsically motivated youngsters and I think you can perhaps just distill that down into um, three things. And you can think of AMP, AMP, okay? Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And if we can coach in such a way that actually develops autonomy, right, by actually rather than saying do this, do that, by actually asking the question and being able to um, give give choice, because choice always invites what? It invites a decision. Mm. Uh, if, if we can actually offer choice when we're coaching or working with people, choice invites decision. Decision encourages ownership. Yeah? I've made a choice, therefore I've got ownership now over that choice. Ownership then okay, encourages responsibility. So that, that A... In, in kind of intrinsic motivation, that autonomy. I have. I am. I am becoming more and more the captain of my own ship, right? As opposed to do this, do that. Okay, when could you go to bed tonight, Alfie? You know, what do you think? You've got, you've got a couple of choices. Nine or ten o'clock. Yeah. So you're going to go for ten o'clock, but at least you've made the decision that you're going to bed at ten o'clock tonight. Okay. And that ten o'clock decision. Okay. Now. You're going to have to be responsible for it. It's, it's a bit different if mum has just said, right, Alfie, it's 10 o'clock tonight, 30 tonight, lights out. Okay. okay, so that idea of autonomy and encouraging that, and then mastery. I had this, um, how are we doing for time? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, There's a wonderful experience, I was watching um, skateboarders skating at, um, we were in London for, for the day last summer, and, uh, and we saw these skaters. And they were at a skate park and they were just practicing. And they were just obsessed with actually mastering their sport. There wasn't a tournament, there wasn't a match, they, they were just obsessed around mastery and, 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 and took such delight in mastering something that really, really mattered to them. And I think that's the M. Uh, can we encourage kids just to, and people just to master something that's really important to them? And then finally, this idea of um, purpose, about being involved in something that's bigger than perhaps just our egocentric selves. So how are we contributing to um, the, the, the sport of skateboarding yeah, by, by mastering these sports? Or are we part of a bigger organization? Are we part of a, a club here? Or are we part of something that, that actually has a much greater sense of um, the common good or ourselves rather than purely um, something around our egocentric selves. So AMP, I guess AM is where I'm going, autonomy, mastery and purpose, invite choice. And the minute we start to invite choice, we start to encourage the growth mindset yeah, by asking good, smart questions. Cool. Um, so let's finish on one question. So we've been on the internet for a while, Steve's done a great job. So I have a certain question from email through, from Mr. Jay Corby. And it says, background growth, and it says, as you assume to be a best-selling author on Amazon, have you got any offshore bank accounts that you'd like to get in our own for tax purposes? Funny enough, funny enough, no, it's on camera. <laughs>
Okay, well, thank you guys for coming. Thanks to Mike for sharing quite a lot of quite the deep personal insights into kind of how we should grow um, with our own lives and with our children's lives. Thanks again. And um, please, please, please um, get signed up tonight or get make sure you pre uh, pre order one on Amazon. And once you've read the book from the fifth of May, I think we can review it. I think um, give it five stars. Thank you. Thank you.